Hey, 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 hey. Welcome back to my channel. I am not feeling the greatest, but I have this information that I have to share with you. So I'm doing this as a recording so that I can upload it. I made a video and I was going to just upload the video and share it with you guys. And then I was like, no. As I was making the video, there were so many things that stood out to me that I was like, oh, I missed that. Oh my gosh, how do I put that in a video and get my point across? Because I, I didn't put my words in the video. So I'm putting my words in the video with a clouded brain right now because I am so sick. My whole house is sick. All of us are sick. It's horrible. <sighs> but I'm going to share this video with you and I'm going to break down these details and I'm going to tell you that I know from Chris Proudfoot's own mouth that Sebastian reached out for help from CPS on more than one occasion. Let's do this. How did you discipline him with, since he, you know, how, how did you discipline him? Sebastian in general? Yeah. Well, that depends. The, crime, the punishment has to fit the crime. Okay, so that was the first clip. This is from Smiley Stories World Channel when she did this three-hour, God bless her, interview with Chris Proudfoot and Katie Proudfoot. And this is Sebastian Rogers. He is a 15-year-old autistic child who is missing from Hendersonville, Tennessee. He has been missing for over a month. This is his mother, Katie, and his stepfather, Christopher or Mr. Chris is what Sebastian called him. This was on March 20th, 2024, that this interview was done. So the first the first little clip here is the, the punishment has to fit the crime, right? We're gonna keep going. So to speak. I don't know how to say this any other way. And I, please forgive me because it's gonna You're sound- You're fine, say it, say well, it. It's gonna sound very jerkish, but I don't want softball questions. People wanted to ask me the hard questions. By golly, let's get these hard questions out. <laughs> okay, he wants the hardball questions, not the softball questions, okay? People have been asking him all these softball questions. He wants these hard questions. This is because, in my opinion, as you can see up in the top corner of the screen here, it says, my opinion. My opinion is, you're going to get a lot of my opinion during this video, I'm just letting you know. My opinion is, he thinks that he's the smartest guy in this whole damn room. This whole damn earth. He is the smartest guy. And no matter what you say, he's going to top it. He's going to have an answer for you. He's going to come back with something. He he thinks he is always right, no matter what it is. And you're going to see more of that in just this nine-minute video that I'm sharing with you right now. <laughs> Sorry, but I just... Well, uh, let, let me start. Okay, H have you ever had CPS called on you before? Yes. Okay. Okay, and you don't have to go into it elaborate or anything. Okay, we all heard him say yes, right? Yes. CPS has been called. Now, why? Why was CPS called, Mr. Chris? Like that, I, I just, that was the question that I had. Um, and that happens, you know, sometimes, especially when you have a um, child who is, you know, has special needs and stuff. That's hard. I've had it, well, I'll be honest with you. I've, I've, I've had CPS called on me in two states. Mm -hmm. New Mexico and Tennessee. In two states, New Mexico and Tennessee. All right, let's keep listening. And so, had so, and that did that include with Sebastian? Tennessee was Sebastian, yes, ma'am. Okay. Tennessee was Sebastian, yes, ma'am. In fact, in fact, what, Mr. Chris? Back Sebastian here. I'll just, like I said. Now he's about to say he has nothing to hide because Mr. Chris is. He thinks he's always right. So, of course, he has to tell the story so he can degrade Sebastian some more. In my opinion, listen to the way that he degrades this child. Now, put yourself in Sebastian's shoes, okay? You feel kind of helpless. You feel like you, you don't really feel safe, okay, with one at least one of your parents at home. You don't feel totally safe. So you reach out. You reach out to people you're supposed to trust at school now listen to the story i got nothing to hide so sebastian went to school one day because he we were at the house he got in trouble he didn't have a belt on i was like where's your belt and got it what kind of got him 
Okay, so he said he got in trouble, but he didn't have his belt on. So he didn't get in trouble for not having a belt on. He got in trouble and Mr. Chris was going to whack him on his butt with his own belt. Instead of using Mr. Chris's belt, he was going to use Sebastian's belt, but Sebastian didn't have a belt on. So he got it. And then Mr. Chris says, whack, kind of got him. Like he was bragging about it. Like he was, <laughs> yep, whack, kind of got him, you know, I kind of whacked his ass. Yeah. Like it's a fucking joke. Okay. I told you guys I'm sick. I, I, my patience is very, very, very thin right now. I probably shouldn't be making this video if I want to be a thousand percent honest with everybody, but I need to share this with you guys. So he goes to school and he tells the teacher. They're mandatory reporters, so the teacher reports it. Mm -hmm. That afternoon, CPS shows up to the house. Okay, so he went to school and he told the teacher, right? The teacher has to report it. That's what children are supposed to do. They're supposed to be able to go to school and feel safe to talk to the adults at the school. They're supposed to be able to tell if something bad is happening at home or if they don't feel safe at home or if they feel like they're in danger at home. They're supposed to be able to confide in their teachers at school so that they can be checked on by child protective services, right? CPS, they protect the children, right? That's their job, right? <sighs> I thought so. While we're actually sitting down to eat dinner. Now, mind you, 15-year-old child, he's not real happy because he's in trouble, so he's being punished. So, he shows, you know, he makes a report, they come to the house. Okay, he shows, and then he stops. He showed what? Did Mr. Chris leave marks? Is that what he showed somebody at school? Because he retracted that, like, pretty quick, right? Let me see if I can go back here. We're going to listen to this again. He shows, now this, he stumbles over his words a lot right here. So this is very, very, very important. Ready? He shows, you know, he makes a report, they come to the house. He shows, you know, so they make a report and they come to the house. Mm, it gets better. And the lady who comes to the house is the same lady we've had, in, uh, she's had a case before. It, it's the same lady what, Mr. Chris? I'm sorry. Let's go back again, please. It's the same lady that's been at your house before? What? Lady who comes to the house is the same lady we've had. In, uh, she's had a case before. It's the same lady we've had in. The, uh, she's had a case before. Hmm. He started stuttering there, huh? Um. Now, the case that was before. Okay, so now I don't think he meant to mention that he knew this lady from a previous call. I think that that was an oopsie. So this wasn't the first time he had met this worker, but now he has to explain it and try to minimize it because he already let the cat out the bag. So let's listen to his explanation of the first time that this CPS woman. Now, th and this baffles me too, because I know CPS goes through caseworkers like they say, you know, multiple times, like they, they change out, you know, the, the workers will start working and then they realize that they can't do the job or they don't get paid enough to do the job or whatever. They cycle out. So there's constantly new workers coming in. Also, there's so many cases that their caseload fills so quickly that each new person that comes in catches most of the new cases. So what a coincidence that this same woman came to the house twice? And was this the only two times that CPS has ever been at the Proudfoot house? I doubt it. Let's keep listening. And I'm even going to go back and we're going to listen to it all the way straight through, all the way back to he shows. Okay. Let's go all the way back here, right here. Here we go. He shows, you know, he makes a report, they come to the house. And the lady who comes to the house is the same lady we've had. In, uh, she's had a case before. Um, now, the case that was before was something that didn't even didn't even happen. And it's like three stories that was shoved into one. And when they finally got it debunked, they were like, "Oh, he's just he just he got he got so mixed up in telling one story, it mixed into three, and it caused the commotion." Well, that got. They 
it was Sebastian's fault. He, he messed it up. So Sebastian had told someone about another situation, but he told three different stories, allegedly, which caused such a commotion that it led to CPS knocking at their door. I mean, so the call that he's trying to talk about was because Sebastian was mad that he got punished. The first call or this other call, I, I won't say first because I don't know if it's the first call or not, but this other call that he's referring to, Sebastian just got confused and started telling three different stories. Darn Sebastian, man, I have never heard a child be talked about in such a demeaning way in such a short period of time. We're only two minutes and 24 seconds into this nine minute video. I can tell Mr. Chris thinks really highly of his stepson, huh? What do you think? They canceled that out. So the one on me, she shows up and uh, I said. Okay, so he said, so the one on me. So does that mean the other story that he was talking about wasn't against him? Was it against mom? What other, what other reason would CPS be at the house? Because Sebastian spoke to his teachers at school about a situation that was happening at home. He got so confused. He told three different stories. But it, it wasn't on Chris. This punishment situation. Now that was on Chris. Mm. I remember this is all in my opinion. Allegedly, I'm just trying to make this all make sense, right? These are Mr. Chris's words. And I'm just trying to understand what he's saying. And I will also say this. I, I don't know exactly what happened to Sebastian. I don't know where Sebastian is right now today. I don't know how he got out of the house on February 26th. I don't know. But I do know that this Mr. Chris is a Mr. Ass, in my opinion. He has, he, he is one of those, one of those adults that I used to despise when I was growing up because I was taught if you want respect, you give respect. You want me to respect you, then you respect me. That's how my mom raised me. She would respect me. And in turn, I was to respect her. And this asshole, I don't see him that way. He's the adult. He gets the respect, period. It doesn't matter how much of an ass he is. He's the adult. He's the elder. So he always gets the respect because in his brain, he deserves it because he's an adult. Bullshit. I disagree with that. If I'm treating a, a, any other human like shit, I do not expect them to respect me because it goes back to treat others how you want to be treated. You know, you want to be told what to do. You want to be treated like a dog. You want to be degraded, demeaned all the time. I'm not going to respect you for that. No, thank you. Sorry. Move on. Okay. But that's how I see Mr. Chris. He thinks that, you know, you know, I think you get it. Let's keep going. Hey, how you doing? It's her again. She's like, oh, hey, she's, hey, I, I'm already don't she's like don't tell me anything but i'm gonna tell you what i know happened and i said okay she goes so he's making it sound like she was like oh it's the kid right it's the kid the kid's the problem i'm here to protect the kid but the kid's the problem right and mr chris of course it's like well yeah it's the kid he's the problem i'm not the problem he's the problem and the lady's like ha 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 i know mr chris you're not the problem <laughs> fucking serious Blah, blah, blah. She told me exactly what happened. I said, yes, ma'am. She goes, oh, my God. I said, yes, ma'am. This this is how it's been. Sebastian thought by telling on me. Telling on me. Making it sound like I was so horrible. Uh, he lost signal. That was the best part oh, of the interview out. right here. You cut out just a minute. That I was going to get in trouble over something stupid. And I was like, no, Sebastian, you got punished, man. You, you got punished. And he was like, but, but. And I was like, you got punished. Okay. So I am I know that I'm not the only one that has noticed this, that Mr. Chris is, Mr. Chris is constantly mocking this 15-year-old child on the spectrum. Constantly. But, 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 but. And that he does that multiple times. I think almost every time that I've heard him, even when he was talking to Nancy Grace, you'll see that towards the end of this video clip that I have here, he mocks Sebastian at least twice in this nine minute video. Can you imagine what a daily 
a, a day was like with Mr. Chris and Sebastian. Can you imagine the frustration for a child that's not on the spectrum being around Mr. Chris all day, every day, or all day, just a full day, a full 24 hour day? Can you imagine the stress, the anxiety, the fear, the pressure, the on edge, walking on eggshells, and then you put a child on the spectrum around that? Shame on Katie, in my opinion. My son is on the spectrum very much like Sebastian has been described. So much so that when Katie was talking about his school picture, she said that he had a chocolate milk mustache because he didn't think to wipe his mouth before he took his pictures that day. My son has the exact same chocolate milk mustache in his school pictures. Never, ever would I let Mr. Chris talk to my child that way. My son is 14 and there is no way I would be damned if that man would speak to my child that way. And the lady took him outside. She goes, Sebastian, just because you get in trouble and you get punished, you need to understand when you go and you say things about people, and you lie and you fabricate things and you make it sound worse than what it is, sir, you can get in trouble for that. As I put on the screen here. So they made this autistic child feel like he would get in trouble for reaching out for help. That That's what Mr. Chris just told us. So we had a, that happened. And the lady was like, I am so sorry. And I said, no, he's just a child. He's upset. It is. So the adult is okay, but the child is not. I didn't realize that Child Protective Services was there to console the adults that were accused by the child. The fuck is wrong with this story? It's what it is. I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. You know, he set that back down at the dinner table and was like, see, eat your food. <laughs> and yeah. we went back and everything's been fine. Ha ha ha. I win. You lose. Ha ha ha. I mean, he gave us that laugh. That's the laugh that he gave Sebastian when they sat back down at the dinner table. Mr. Chris was like, ha, ha, ha. I win. You lose. Suck it up. Can you hear it? Can you imagine being that child? Can you imagine being that mother watching your child? Like, did she think it was funny when Mr. Chris laughed at her son? Because now he's in fear that he can get in trouble. For reaching out for help i'm so disappointed I, I i am i am beyond disappointed and that's me being careful of what i say yeah i'm sorry i have to do all for clarification no i did not allow him to beat my son with a belt he did not beat my son with a belt but he does belittle your son and degrade your son and mock your son and laugh at your son and make your son feel unwanted and dumb and less than, doesn't he? Right? Am I wrong? He didn't beat your son when he whipped him with a belt. I'll give you that. But what else was he doing? I'd rather be hit with the belt than be emotionally and mentally traumatized. I know firsthand. Now, to be honest with you, it has nothing to do with finding my son. You don't so, think that D you don't think okay. All right. Well, look, man. How does DC how does CPS have to do with anything finding Sebastian? Okay, he's about to say <laughs> he's about to say this. Okay, so he's saying he's telling Josh that CPS his CPS cases don't have anything to do with finding Sebastian at all, right? Okay, well, Sebastian ran away. He could have been running away because of the incidents that he's been put in fear. He felt like he couldn't tell anybody at school because Mr. Chris has already made best friends with them. So anytime they come to the house, they just laugh at him and ha ha ha, you lose. So he can't reach out to anybody at school. But he was intimidated, in my opinion. Like I said, there's a lot of my opinion here, okay? I think he was intimidated by Mr. Chris and he was scared to reach out. And if he ran away, I could see that as a reason why. So I think that the CPS cases are very relevant to the situation. Just like I think that Chris's other child and Chris's ex-wife, his fourth ex-wife, I think their situation is very relevant to this situation because it gives us a snippet into what Nina lived through and what he put his own, his own blood through, his own child through. 
he's living in a house with a kid that's not his. He's been a part of this kid's life for over half his life. Sebastian's 15. He's been around since he was seven or eight. And Sebastian still calls him Mr. Chris. I mean, how much formal could you get other than calling him Mr. Proudfoot? He was scared, in my opinion. Mr. Chris tries to be intimidating. He tries on purpose. All right. So let's keep going and listen to what he's about to say here because this is, um, yeah, he, he's about to say what I already put on the screen right there. Because if if you're insinuating something, well, you said they opened up an investigation. It. You said they opened up an investigation. If you're insinuating something, come out and say it. Well, Josh was talking at the same time that Mr. Chris said, come out and say it. So I'll say it. I find it very, very disturbing that CPS has responded to your house on at least two occasions due to Sebastian reaching out for help. Two different occasions. I, I'm curious more details on that first occasion or that I keep saying first, but I don't know if it was the first one or not. I'll say the other. And how many more were there? Were those the only two? I bet not. I have a really good feeling that there were more than just two. And so you tell me what it has to do with him. Because what did I tell you? That's what you're not listening. The sheriff's department told us that they are required to report it to DCS, CPS, whatever you want to call them. They are required to report it to them. That answer has yet to change. It hasn't changed any of the slightest. And, and okay, so that's the, okay, I get it. So it's the only Thank open you. investigation. Thank you. You're welcome. I mean, see, just the way that he talks to other adults, the, the demeaning tone and the way he talks down to and thank you. And uh, uh, I just, I can see him doing that to the child. And that's not, that's just not, that's, it just shouldn't, it just shouldn't, it's not. Did you ever use a belt on him? Have I ever used a belt on Sebastian? Yes. Okay. Outside of his clothes, on his buttocks. Okay. Justin said he wants to understand this. He said, am I understanding this? You hit him with a belt because he didn't have a belt. No. No. Okay. No, 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 no. So the question about hitting him on the outside of his clothes, on his butt with a belt, that was something that he got in trouble for because he lied to us and he got one lick. And that resulted in CPS because Sebastian told at school and CPS was sent to the house and Mr. Chris talked his way out of it. And then they both told Sebastian that he could get in trouble for telling people at school that he got hit with a belt, right? Now, this was a three-hour interview that Smiley did. This clip right here was towards the end. I did them in order. This one was towards the end. I'm so now, Chris and Katie are on Nancy Grace. And this is five days after they were on Smiley's panel. Got a question for you. Yes, I want to find out about Mr. Proudfoot hitting Sebastian with a belt. What happened? Uh, that was actually several years ago. Um, and it to was Mr. Proudfoot, one. to Mr. Proudfoot, to Mr. Proudfoot, yes, Mr. Proudfoot, what happened? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I thought you were asking Katie. Um, Sebastian had gotten in trouble. He got, got, got caught lying. And we asked, I had asked him, I said, Hey, you know, you got to have a punishment for this. He says, yes, sir. And I said, okay. So I gave him a swat with a belt on his buttocks on the outside of his clothes, one swat. Now, I think that this was the last interview that Chris and Katie did. And before this, they had done a few. I think that somebody had given them the advice to shorten up their answers, not elaborate on everything, not give so much detail. So when they get on here with Nancy, I think she has them intimidated a little bit. And that's why they're both sitting there looking like, they're sedated or some shit and it's yes ma'am no ma'am and she has to like pry answers out of them to get more than yes ma'am no ma'am out of them what did he lie about at the, i honestly i don't remember at the time but it was probably something dealing with school because that's majority where his issues lie did he have other issues at school 
Now, one thing I like about Nancy Grace is her face doesn't lie. Like you can look at her face and know exactly what she thinks, what she wants to say, but she doesn't say. And I think that when they put Chris and Katie full screen, it's to hide Nancy's face. <laughs> Watch that. We're almost done here. We're we're less than three minutes to go here. Some behavioral stuff, but nothing too crazy causes an issue. And instead of being honest about it, he, he'll lie like, no, I didn't. OK, Sebastian. OK, this smug, smart ass look right here. I have never in my life looked at either one of my children with that face ever. And he just said, OK, Sebastian. Now, you know, he gave him that look. You know, he spoke in that tone to him. He just mocked Sebastian and then said what his response would be or was that smart ass look right there. That face says, I win, you lose. Like, I, it, that's well, such a snap. Stop face. And he continues on. So then it causes an issue. And instead of being honest about it, he, he'll lie. Like, no, I didn't. Okay, Sebastian. Was that the first time? Was that the first time you had ever hit him with a belt? Yes, ma'am. The one and only time, actually. I don't believe that. When was this? Uh, years ago, ma'am. I don't believe that either. Any idea how many? Three, ten, one? Uh, <laughs> it, it Probably at least three years ago. I don't understand how that turned into a CPS or Child Protective Services complaint. How were they that, alerted that, that you hit him with a belt? That did not turn. That did not turn into a CPS request, uh, service call. Um, didn't he just tell us on Smiley's panel five days earlier a whole different story? So he's a liar. So he just lied to Nancy Grace, and you can see that look on her face right there. She's saying, um, "Excuse me." You think that her team didn't do their research? You think that she didn't already hear that clip? The clip that we just watched in this nine minute video? You think she didn't already hear that? Mm, I'd say busted. That look right there. Busted. Liar. In my opinion. You hit him with a belt. That did not turn, that did not turn into a CPS request, uh, service call. There were other CPS reports, right? Were they regarding your other child? There is one in regards to my daughter that I know of out in New Mexico with my ex-wife and myself. Then how does that turn into a CPS complaint against you? I have no idea, ma'am. So he's going to blame it on rumors, not words that he said out, out of his own mouth. Um, just rumors, speculation. You know, it's not his own words that we already heard. I have no idea, ma'am. There's a lot of misinformation out there right now in regards to my New Mexico case that actually has no relevance to the, the Sebastian case. I've got a question about the belt incident. You're telling me that was the only time that you ever hit Sebastian with a belt. Yes, ma'am. And you're also telling me that did not make it to CPS? No, ma'am, that did not. That did not make it to CPS? No, ma'am, that did not. Because he shows something at school and the CPS worker came to the house again. That wasn't her first time at your house. And she told you that she knew what had happened. And you guys, you and the CPS worker, allegedly, made Sebastian feel like he couldn't reach out for help anywhere. Sebastian has reached out for help and he was made to feel foolish and threatened that he would get in trouble for reaching out for help. So how many other times has CPS been to the Proudfoot home? How many other times has there been an open CPS case surrounding Sebastian Rogers before he vanished on February 26th, he allegedly left his home between midnight and 6 a.m. with no shoes on his feet, even though he's allergic to grass. It doesn't make sense to me. People are saying um, 
Chris and Katie said that they talked on the phone for three hours and people are like, there's no way I talked to my spouse for three hours. Okay. My husband does work out of town. Sometimes he's home right now, but he works out of time out of town. Sometimes he gets pretty in. He's gone for the whole week. Um, there were times that he was working five and a half hours away. He got off work on Saturday. He drove home Saturday. He still, he slept here for a little bit. And then Sunday he drove back to his hotel and he was at work at, for the next week. But he came home for one day and the days that he didn't come home, the Monday through Saturday, when he was at work at the hotel, we would talk on the phone for a few hours at a time. I would put him on FaceTime on video chat and we would sit and just chat where he felt like he was at home with us because he was gone for so long. So that way we're still a family. He, he's not physically here, but he's here. He still gets to see the kids. He still gets to see what's going on. And, you know, we felt more of a family unit by being able to do that. It wasn't a three hour call every day. It wasn't even a call every evening. You know, we would talk maybe once a day. And then there were a few times a week that we talk for more than an hour. Um, but when they said that part, that didn't surprise me much. I, I've done that, been there, done it. You know, um, I can see that there was something else also. Oh, oh, also I remember, and I haven't found this yet, but I remember hearing Katie say when she got up to get Sebastian ready for school, she got up out of her room and went to Sebastian's room. Now, if you've seen the layout of the house, uh, let me see if I can pull those pictures up. Okay, so first I'm going to try to share this with you. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it. This um, Evil Exist channel shared this. And this is Sebastian's birthday party. And I'm just going to play it and let you listen. Birthday boys! Sebastian! Thank you for coming out to celebrate with us today. Drop those chips. <laughs> All right, it looks like red team, unfortunately, that one was a miss. But blue team, that one was a hit. I know, it's okay. This is our double chip. No, it's not. Wherever the double chip lands, it'll give you 20. So it's going to be a Okay, who's, also, that's that you. one spot that has two chips stacked on top of each other. If you want to take that top one, you can tuck it in front of the bottom one to level the playing field there. No. <laughs> Never. Yes. Yes, hey, you have to get the 200 again. No, she doesn't. She can get whatever. Okay, so that talking right there that we just heard, I believe that that is Sebastian's aunt, which is Chris Proudfoot's sister, Melissa, if I understand correctly. So we heard Sebastian say, you have to get the 200 or something. And she said, no, she doesn't. Okay, so I'm going to go back just a little bit and we'll listen again. No, she doesn't. She can get whatever. Hey, you have to get the 200 again. No, she doesn't. She can get whatever. All right, red right, team. That double chip. That gives them four. <laughs> what? I'm taking a video of that was Sebastian saying Melissa. What? <laughs> wow, happy birthday. What? I'm taking a video of he was letting her know that the game was about to start, but she was taking a video. All right. So let me see. Let me stop that one. Okay. So this is the front of the house kind of from the left. So the driveway goes up along the side of the house here. You can see the garage is here. And way back here is the master bedroom area. I got to wrap this up. I am not feeling the greatest. Okay, so this is Sebastian's window here. Mom is way in the back over here, remember? Okay, so the front door is right here in the front center, right? Here's the front door, and here's the front door from the inside. Okay, and from here, you can see the front door is back here. 
We got the two chairs at the bar here. This is obviously the kitchen. The stairs go up here to the half story. It's a ranch style home with a half over the garage. It's really pretty. I mean, this house is a very, very nice house. $641,000 home. Okay. The master bedroom is to the right over here, um, back this way. This is the living room right here. I think this is the only part that I've seen that has carpet in the main part of the living area. So Katie said she was in here on the couch when she was on the phone with Mr. Chris and heard the thud in Sebastian's room around 10 o'clock. His bedroom is right down in this hallway right here. So I can see how she would have heard that. But when she got up the next morning, she came out of her room, walked right past the kitchen. Here's the dining room. Here's the front door. She walked right through here to go into his room to wake him up. The first thing she said was he wasn't in his room, so she went to look in the kitchen because sometimes he likes to go in there and get snacks. Well, when she came out of her room, she walked right past the kitchen. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense because you can see in the kitchen, looking back towards her room, her room is over here. The kitchen is here. Now we're standing here at the hallway where Sebastian's room is. When she went to bed, she went this way and that way into her bedroom way back over here. And Sebastian is way up here, right? right? Okay, so here's the front door. Here's the inside of the front door. Sebastian's room is right here. Here's the dining room that's immediately to your left when you come in the front door. And look right there, you can see the kitchen. And right here, you can see the bar stools. See the bar stools right here? And the oven right here? This is the kitchen right here. Now here we can see, I think this is, there's a, a bathroom here. It's a three bedroom, four bath, or three and a half bath, something like that. So I think there's a bathroom here. There's a bedroom over here, and Sebastian's bedroom is up that way. Here's the sunroom that she spoke about. And here, standing over by, by the hallway by Sebastian's room, looking back into the living room. And here's the kitchen. She would have come out of here when she got out of bed in the morning, walked right past the kitchen, to get Sebastian up. There's the kitchen. She would have walked past the kitchen into the living room, into the hallway, into his bedroom. So I got to thinking, you know, she said that she went into his room. He wasn't there. So she went back to the kitchen because she, she thought maybe he went to get something to eat because, you know, breakfast and stuff. And I was like, but you walked right past the kitchen. You walked past the kitchen when you came out of your bedroom because the kitchen's right there to your right. When you come out of your bedroom and walk, through the living room into his room, right? Well, then I went back and listened to one of their very first interviews that they did on Dutchess. And this is also where I can relate. She said that Sebastian likes to move like a ninja around the house. Same thing. He does the exact same thing. He will hide behind the walls. Our house is a circle. The bedrooms are in the hallway off of the living room. And you can walk through the laundry room into the kit. Excuse me, I'm telling you, I'm not feeling well. Into the kitchen and back into the living room. So it's a big circle and he'll hide. And he is very, very, very quiet. And I don't know how he's so quiet, but he hides. So when she said that, I could relate to her because my son also does things like that. So that made sense to me, okay? Maybe he was in the kitchen, maybe he squatted down. I would have thought the same thing. You know, if, if I woke up and my son wasn't in his bed, I would thought I would think that he was in the house somewhere and I just didn't see him or he was hiding from me or, you know, something. So I can totally relate to that part of it. I'm really not feeling well. I'm going to go lay down. I just wanted to get this information out to you as soon as I could, because I feel like this is important. And, um, and we need answers. We need answers about where is Sebastian? Where is Sebastian Rogers? This is Sebastian Rogers right here. The it's by 520 pounds. He's out there somewhere. Where is he? Where is Sebastian Rogers? Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. If you have any credible information, not any information that you get from our videos or our speculation or from spirit or anything like that, but if you have any credible information, call 1-800-TBI-FIND or the Sumner County Sheriff's Office at 
38. And that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about all this CPS talk. Okay? <sighs> Say a prayer that my family gets better because we are all icky, icky, icky. And I'm ready for all these germs to be out of our home. Please and thank you so much. And until next time, I love you bunches.